Clinical trials are designed to minimize the risk to the patient, and there's a lot of safeguards built into clinical trials these days. We all want to get the best answer to the study, and we want to conduct the study with the highest ethical standards. The highest ethical standards are never a question. That's what we must do. I think the common fears about clinical trials are we don't know what we're doing, we're just experimenting, and it's just an irrational fear because we think about it so carefully when we do a clinical trial. Well, when a potential new medicine is ready from the perspective of the researchers to go into people, there's a very rigorous process that is undertaken. Information must be reviewed about the scientific rationale, the toxicology, which means safety testing in animals before people are exposed. There has to be approval of what the initial dose will be, as well as the schedule. There's several layers of review before a single patient is exposed to a new investigational agent. Now, is it perfect? No, because if we knew all the answers, it wouldn't be a clinical trial. The important thing, I believe, is that as a participant in a clinical trial, you will be taken care of, you will be given uh, the best supportive care, and in the event that the clinical trial is not in your best interest, it can be discontinued and an individual patient can go on to another form of treatment. I explain to cancer patients that when they're on a clinical trial, they're going to be followed very, very closely by very, very specific guidelines within the protocol. It gives the design, it gives the study drugs, it gives the side effects, it gives what to do if you have side effects, who you need to report it to if you have side effects. They also include a real focus on the safety for patients and the potential benefits versus the risks. And it's all spelled out like a recipe. And so you know that the doctor has to adhere to a recipe that's been designed by a bunch of experts. So the review process for a protocol includes in your own institution, you review the protocol with your colleagues, and then once that's approved, there's the Institutional Review Board, the IRB, which is a body that looks at the safety for the patient. The Institutional Review Board is a very unbiased entity, and so it's made up of various people. So it's going to have researchers, people from your medical team um, and that institution, but it also typically has a patient representative. So they're looking at the patient perspective that's also involved in participating in a clinical trial. As the clinical trial progresses, there's um, data review committees. They're checking to see how patients are responding to treatment. If a significant number of patients are having an adverse reaction, they discuss whether or not it's appropriate to move forward with keeping the clinical trial going. They can also, on the other hand, see that an investigational arm is far superior to the standard of care, and they can recommend that the study be halted for ethical reasons because of the superiority of the investigational agent. So all of those things are possible. Of course, there's no guarantees of success through a clinical trial, and patients need to understand that going into the trial. Anytime I had any type of issue, my physician had to go back and make sure that everything, anything that she offered me was adhering to the guidelines in the clinical trial. So I felt more cared for. Actually felt a little loved, too. <laughs>